Hey there, guys. All right, today we are back with some history matters. This time, why does Belgium exist? A short animated documentary. We recently watched uh, that uh, Geography Now on Belgium, so you know what? When I was looking for a video, some videos to record, um, react to for today, saw this and I was like, fuck it, go with this one. Um, so, yeah, but before we dive into the video, make sure you go check out the links below in my, de in my description box or in my pinned comment in the comment section. I have a link to my Twitch channel where I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. No, not Thursday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. U.S. Central Standard Time. And then I also have a link to my gaming channel here on YouTube where I'm just uploading old stream VODs. Now, why does Belgium exist? I frankly do not know. Let's go ahead and dive in. Belgium. It's a country which often has to justify its own existence. Sandwiched between France, Germany, and the Netherlands, its population is divided amongst I don't those who speak well, French, German, and Dutch. Since about six seconds after its foundation, other nations have often spoke of dividing Belgium up. So, given how often its existence has both been questioned and threatened, there's an obvious question to answer. Why does Belgium exist? The first thing to answer is how Belgium came into existence in the first place. After the Napoleonic Wars, Europe was a drastically changed continent, and one of the major changes that occurred was that the Austrian Netherlands was incorporated into the brand new United Kingdom of the Netherlands. King William I of the Netherlands was a Protestant who had little interest in preserving the rights of the South's Mass Catholic poo. residents. He used much of the South's industrialised economy to fund the North, and he was also a bit of a despot. Oh! Well, that's not good. This was obviously a problem, and in 1830, when riots broke out, talk soon turned to secession. William tried to crush the revolt, but many troops in the south quickly defected. William needed help, and so he asked the great powers for assistance. And the great powers did help, but they helped the south and recognised the new country's independence, and the new country... <laughs> that's just rude. It was called Belgium. Recognition of independence was done on one condition. It had to be a monarchy, because none of that republicanism stuff, absolutely not. Yeah, of course not. No, no, definitely not. no. The Belgians would finally have Never. a king that would represent them, a local, a Catholic, and a man who wouldn't try to expand the power of the monarchy and become a despot. Instead, they got Leopold I, a German-speaking yep. Protestant who quickly expanded the power of the monarchy, but you know, zero out of three isn't bad. <laughs> And with Leopold, Belgium God has come out ahead, given that at the London conference, France had proposed that Belgium be divided between its neighbours. This was the Talleyrand plan and was rejected by the British because France can't have nice things had been <laughs> British foreign policy for over 400 years. We hate you. ...is at this point, and that wasn't going to change any time soon. Tradition. Also, to Britain, Belgium was seen as an important buffer state that would limit the scale of any future Franco-Prussian war, in theory. William I yeah. didn't accept Belgian independence. It didn't work in... In reality, though. ...and so invaded in 1831, but the French came to the Belgians' aid and sent the Dutch packing. In 1839, William accepted Belgian independence and the Netherlands would exist. never again try to reclaim the South, which now included this land from Luxembourg. And it was also in this year that... No invading. Signed, Britain. ...Britain guaranteed Belgian neutrality. Immediately after Belgium's formation, tensions arose between the Dutch-speaking population in the north, the Flemish, and the French-speaking southerners, the Walloons, whose language was the official language of the state. Langue officielle. The initial hope was to get northerners speak over French. time to speak French, but fun fact, no. Tensions <laughs> between the two groups would rise, but the threat to dissolve Belgium never went anywhere since both peoples largely saw unity within Belgium as better than the alternatives. So what about any future threats? Finding out why Belgium exists in the first place isn't the same as asking why it still exists. And the fledgling nation wasn't without its concerns. French and German leaders coveted parts of Belgium in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, but the British guarantee and the fear of upsetting the balance of power stopped any action. It wasn't until World War I that the second tangible threat to Belgium's existence occurred when German troops crossed into the country in order to get to France. Germany occupied most of the country, and after the war, the plan was for these areas to be annexed into Germany, and these areas would become a rump state under a new monarchy. Towards oh the end of the war, Germany made We're a concession losing. on these demands and would respect Belgian independence so long as it was split into two nations, the Northern Flemish one being aligned with Germany, who would gain Antwerp. This never happened because, obviously, and Germany eventually lost the war. Belgium yep. then got to sit at the winner's table and was even given this territory from Germany. Although at first, Belgium had made much larger demands, because it wanted to annex Luxembourg and to take territory from the neutral Dutch, since apparently Belgium holds a grudge. The last <laughs> threat... 
Belgians hold a grudge. Huh? The Belgian existence right. came during World War II when it was conquered. It was originally administered as a single unit along with a chunk of northern France, but Hitler had very little in the way of concrete plans. The Belgian. Yeah, yeah, he didn't really have too many concrete plans, did he? The collaborators had hoped for Belgium to be split like this, with Flanders being merged with the Netherlands. Yet Germany was unwilling and unable to do this since it was busy losing the war. In late 1944, Germany then formally annexed Belgium, a plan which had one snag. It had already been liberated, and so that's not how that works. Oh. No other nation would threaten <laughs> Belgian existence thereafter, and all attempts to split the state would from then on be internal in nature. Belgium's existence is actually quite remarkable, given that it spent one of the most dangerous periods in European history sandwiched between two nations that really liked like annexing things. In the end, yeah. the Belgian people would find you And specifically, they also like to fight each other a lot. ...union together, despite their differences, much more compelling than any of the alternatives. And that is why Belgium exists. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You know what? Nice. That was why Belgium exists. Um, pretty much, uh, <laughs> it's the, um, I guess, less bad option or something. Um, or at this point, they're too stubborn and they don't want to give it up, which, you know what? I understand. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this was just a short one. Um, I don't really know what else to say here. It's fun. History Matters always does a great job. Um, so yeah, that was Why Does Belgium Exist? Or I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Why Does Belgium Exist? Short animated documentary by History Matters. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.